Hey friend, Levi here. And in this video, I wanna share with you five images from the scariest moments in my filmmaking career. I'm calling this five stills, five stories, and later I'm gonna invite you to share a set of images from your life that fits a certain theme. And I'm gonna feature some of my favorites on my Instagram, so make sure you uh, stick around for that. And we're gonna be doing something different here where as we look through these images, I'm actually gonna be editing them in the video as I talk about them, which is a little bit of an intimidating thing for me, but I've been going through this massive archive of photos I have because I've been stuck inside a lot lately and I've been feeling kind of nostalgic and I wanted to find a set of images to share but I couldn't figure out what theme to hold them all together and some of the scariest moments kind of felt like a good fit for me. So as I go through and try to re-edit some of these, uh, we're gonna be doing it in Luminar 4. So Skylum, the maker of the software, is actually the sponsor of this video. And if you're wondering why we're using uh, Luminar, I'm gonna try, pique your interest here and kind of salt your palate about uh, what's special about the software. So we're actually in the software right now, and I'm gonna get to my first scary image, one that really makes my stomach drop. But I wanna show you just how powerful this software is. So we're gonna go to this image of some boats. These are tall ships. It's kind of just a bland, image to be honest it's overcast it's kind of gross but it was a special one day shoot where we actually had the both boats together so if the client asked me to get a copy of this photo so they could print it on a brochure I'd feel a little bit not great about sending this one over but it's from our one day of shooting so how could we spice this up so we're gonna go over here to the creative tab we're gonna go to AI sky replacement we're gonna select dramatic sky 4 and with one click boom the image is immediately transformed just by clicking one button. And this is this is flawless. This is professional quality sky replacement stuff going on here. And this is not a simple image to do it on. We've got sails, we've got lines, and it, it honestly has done a better job than if I had like a half hour to do this by myself, like cutting things out. And uh, the cool part is, is that once you buy this software, <laughs> you have it for life. So it's none of the subscription nonsense. You just pay for it once. It works as a plugin in Lightroom and Photoshop. So it's really efficient in workflows that you already have going. And this is just one of the tools. And I'm gonna dive in a little bit more later on when I would actually use this because this is kind of transferring over into that digital art compositing category. So there's some specific use cases of when I would and would not do this, but uh, we're gonna be going through and sharing some of the stories here. And the first image to me is a pretty special one. So that takes us back five years ago. And this isn't the image here. I wasn't scared to propose, I was stoked. Uh, but five years ago, that's uh, right around the time that I proposed to my wife, Janelle. Five minutes after the proposal, it was pouring rain, which is kind of a fun little memory for us. But uh, this is the time of my life that I started filming slacklining. So I joined a Facebook group, met up with some people online, and one thing led to another, and suddenly I had found out that there was highlining in British Columbia, and I wanted to show up and start filming them. And one of the first days that I showed up to film them, we got this image right here. So I look stoked there, and I, I truthfully am really pumped up, but the scary part of this image for me is I remember what it looks like beneath me, and that is this. So that is what I'm looking at from that perspective, straight down, drop from the waterfall, just this massive surging power of the, you know that gut dropping feeling as you kind of look over an edge? Well, when you're hanging from a slack line, it's just kind of constantly there. So jumping back to this photo, this this one has a special place in my heart and the memories that go along with it and how scared I was in that moment. I love using this in presentations when I'm sharing about my work and the progression that I've gone through in my career. Uh, but when I look at this image, I've always kind of been irked by how busy it is. And I don't have a higher quality version of this image, it's just kind of a mediocre JPEG and I've always wanted to kind of spice this one up a little bit. So we're gonna use the tools inside Luminar to kind of really make that happen today. So coming over here to the Essentials tab, we're gonna jump into the AI Structure tool. I primarily start with the AI Enhance and AI Structure tool. So the structure tool here is using technology to be aware of what the subject matter is here. So I'm gonna punch in a little bit here so you can really see what's going on. But if we boost this way up, let's just see what happens. It really sharpens and adds some clarity-esque nature to those trees and everything behind. But as you can notice, it kind of left my skin basically the same. So it popped the trees off, but it left my skin like normal skin, where if you're familiar with a clarity slider, if you crank that thing up, it's just gonna destroy the skin and make me look like an alien robot, but it's selectively targeting where this effect is being applied. And that's just kind of the underpinnings of what makes the software really powerful is it's not just applying to the whole image, it's actually selectively being aware of what aspects of your image might most benefit from this effect. So in this image here, what I want to do is take away clarity from the trees. So again, if I am punched in here and go way up, you can see it adds 
add that back into the trees, but we're going to pull it back and it's kind of adds this defocused nature to the trees, but it leaves me basically left alone. So that might be a little strong there, but it's showing you kind of on the two ends of the spectrum what it's able to do and still keep a lot of sharpness on my face without applying it there. So I think somewhere kind of right up around here is a little better. So that's just one tool in the software. I'm gonna buzz through and do some other little adjustments here and show you what the end result is. Okay, so this is the finished edit on my first image here that took me about a minute and a half. Uh, again, this is what we started with. This is before and after, before and after. So if we use this uh, before and after slider here, you can really see I was able to recover a more natural face look with some of those skin tones and then help the subject matter pop from the background a little better. So this here is our, our second image from uh, some of the scariest moments in my filmmaking career. And uh, on first glance, you might not know what was scary about this, but uh, this was a client project that I had really promised I would do some amazing results. And this was the first day that I filmed with a drone from a boat this big. And if you haven't drone from a boat before, you're missing out on the intensity that is hoping that you get the drone back to the boat so you can get your images off the card. Trying to get the boats coordinated and in the same spot, it's a pretty high pressure and there's teams of eight, like 30 people on each boat working their butts off to make it happen and you as the filmmaker are trying to capture that moment and it's all just pretty intense and frantic and I'm just hoping I don't crash it but then there's the excitement of actually nailing an image like this. So we're gonna try spice this image up again. If we go over here to the creative tab, and we go to AI sky replacement, we can select a sky here and immediately just add some new dynamic. Okay, that one doesn't fit quite. Let's maybe try dramatic sunset seven. Nope, that one definitely doesn't fit. Uh, you can cycle through here and once it already analyzes the image and that, see that looks amazing. And if we punch in on the sails here, you can really see that it's just flawless on one click but you can defocus the sky if it's in the background of an image that has bokeh. So you could kind of do a defocus thing. You can add in atmospheric haze. The temperature slider is actually really important for making sure it matches the scene. Or we could go over and bring up the temperature of the, the image that it's going into with kind of this relighting feature. So we bump that relighting up. You can see how it's adding the temperature from the sky kind of into the image itself. So this is one of those scenarios where if the client asked me for my best image that we could use in a brochure or something, I wouldn't tend to like, again, let's go back to original sky. I wouldn't tend to want to put this one forward because it's lacking a little something special here. But if we pop in that sky replace, it really helps it shine. And this is kind of one of those unique circumstances where you only sometimes get one day of shooting. And yes, I love waiting for the best light possible. And I love shooting at golden hour all day, every day. But sometimes you're constrained to a schedule and that just means the images that you're stuck with are what you're stuck with. But one way of using sky replacements is when you're on location, if you have your subject matter exposed properly and it's blowing out this beautiful sunset and you're kind of struggling with a good exposure, you can take a plate of the sunset in good exposure, then get an image of your subject in proper exposure, and then use the AI sky replacement to swap that in. So we're gonna go back to the sailing image here and I'm gonna do some touch-ups and then uh, show you what I did. Okay, so this is our finished sailing edit. Uh, this is the before, this is the after, again, before, after. So we kind of gave it a full tonal makeover using some of the various tools here. Okay, I wanna talk about the third image from the scariest moments in my career uh, to set up the story. I've got this image here, and this is uh, me filming on a pillar of Michael on a high line, and he's got a leash that's attaching him to the slack line uh, around these rings. So if Michael falls, he'll basically drop like a rag doll underneath, but he's got this leash attaching him. So that's me filming over here but while I was there filming I'd always heard Spencer talk about free soloing where you'd walk a line like this hundreds of feet above the ground without a harness on and I'd never yet seen it I I didn't know if this was something that he did regularly I didn't really understand it and then all of a sudden uh, this happened where uh, Spencer walked that same line 
but without a harness on, so you'll notice there's nothing attaching him to that line. He's completely untethered. And uh, if he falls, it's up to his hands to grab the line, otherwise it's a, a drop that is very far. So this image here was taken by my buddy RJ. I'm filming just to the left here. And uh, I wanna spice this image up here because uh, it's a special memory to me. And uh, the image is just, I mean, Spencer's just in his element here. So let's, uh, let's dive in. First things first, we're actually gonna do some reframing. So we're gonna re kind of crop this. I like having Spencer right in the center like that. And then the leading line of the slack line is pretty nifty. These hats and these heads down here is kind of distracting to me. So we're gonna hop over to these tools and use the erase function. Pop this a little bigger with a bracket. Kind of select where I'm trying to get rid of. Hit erase. Boom, it did an amazing job actually. I thought I'd have to go in there and touch that up a little bit with a clone stamp. My workflow primarily is to start with the Essentials tab and use the AI Enhance tool first and kind of just see what it generally does to the image using its uh, smart technology there. So we're seeing some boost in the shadows a little bit. Um, some saturation boost and smart contrast going on. So let's maybe, we're gonna settle somewhere around there, get some of that saturation in the image. So if we turn that off and on, you'll kind of see it's kind of boosting the overall exposure and getting some nice saturation. Okay, so one more tool here in the Essentials tab is the Landscape Enhancer. Uh, so we've got a Dehaze, Golden Hour, and Foliage Enhancer. So Dehaze is for like that landscape shot where moisture is making the image a little hazy, so that will remove some of that. Then the Golden Hour just kind of adds in some of that golden glow to the image, so I just have it slightly there. And then Foliage Enhancer is the one that really makes landscape foliage pop. So that's it on the, on the absurd side. And so I just have it popped a little bit, but a cool aspect here under the advanced settings is that you can shift the hue of foliage really easy. So this is similar to just going to like hue and saturation sliders, but this target specifically just foliage. So if those same colors were present on Spencer, it wouldn't shift those instead. So I just have them shifted a little bit to the left here. This is our finished edit here, but as normal, I think I went a little heavy on the color stuff. So we're just gonna dial it back a touch on the adjustment layer. Um, but to see the changes we did, I'm just gonna punch in a touch here. So I don't know how well it's coming through from the YouTube compression, but we went from a moderately out of focus face and body, and it's sharpened up in a way that feels pretty natural, at least on uh, my, my display right here. And I think it looks uh, pretty great. I want to print off this photo and uh, send it to Spencer because uh, it's just it's just a rad photo, and uh, I certainly will never forget what this was like watching Spencer solo for the first time. It was just it's pretty incredible. Okay, so my next uh, scary moment for my career is me here ascending up this line in uh, Moab, Utah. And if we go to this other image real quick, this is where I climbed up to, but it was basically ascending a feature that looks kind of like this, but just a little longer. So that's Castleton, this is the rectory, and this image here of me climbing is going up that. And I, I don't usually do climbing related stuff normally, uh, and climbing a flix, fixed rope is much uh, much easier than actually climbing. But I was scared here, and I was scared because I was taking up my camera gear. That was probably, I would say this takes the cake for the most scared I've been on a shoot, which is surprising, but it was just hard jugging up this rope with weight. If you've jugged up ropes, that's when you use ascenders to climb up. Um, that's these things here in my hand. It's just challenging and uh, yeah, anyhow, I do not have much practice on a wall and I need more practice. The climbers out there are just gonna laugh at me because jugging up a rope is not that hard, but it was intense for me. And then when I got to the top, I noticed that the anchor was very basic and scary. And if I had known it was as basic, I would not have, uh, I maybe wouldn't even have gone up at all, but let's do some retouching on this and I'll show you what I did. Okay, this is the finished image of me climbing here. 
the main benefits were kind of defocusing some of these lower rocks with the AI structure, um, getting some detail back in these rocks, and then also got some uh, color adjustments done on my face because on the before, if we slide this across, you'll see some of uh, the red tones in my face. I think I was a little sunburnt, but I wasn't that sunburnt. And this is, uh, this is a JPEG, so we don't quite have the color depth that I would like, but I'm liking these skin tones on the right a lot more than the stuff from before. I'm gonna show you my fifth and final scary moment of my career, but I wanna do a speed round of some other photos first, just real quick to show you some other, just how fast you can move here. So this is another sailing photo. We're gonna go over to Creative AI Sky Replacement, drop in, let's say Dramatic Sky 3, boom. Immediately improved. Light, actually we're gonna go AI Enhance first and see kind of what that gives us. We'll pop this up, getting some recovery in those shadows. We're gonna add some structure here and just look at that water change and shift as I crank this up. Somewhere around there maybe. Gonna go over to light, we're gonna warm it up. Uh, somewhere around there. We're gonna use some smart contrast where it will selectively apply contrast. We're gonna add some structure here and just look at that water change and shift as I crank this up. Somewhere around there maybe. Gonna go over to light, we're gonna warm it up. Uh, somewhere around there. We're gonna use some smart contrast where it will selectively apply contrast. So boom, there's our finished photo. Uh, it's pretty stylized. Again, editing photos is a little bit of a subjective thing, but uh, I like the look of the finished edit better than the original. Okay, let's pop to this aerial photo here real quick. Uh, this is one that I took from the drone. Okay, there's the final uh, aerial image. Before, after, before after so we're able to bring out some of the contrast back into those shadowy areas get some pops of colors and really emphasize the unique dynamic range of this image and with an aerial photo with the atmospheric haze like the moisture in the air you'll sometimes lose some of that nice detail that's there in real life um, so being able to bring that some of that back in with the the landscape enhancers pretty cool. Okay, so the last final fifth image in this set that I wanna share with you today actually is the one that I climbed up the rectory uh, here to shoot in Moab. And uh, that is an image of Mia setting a world record. So this image has a massive uh, story and kind of culmination to it that I could probably talk about it for a half hour. And this is a 500 meter slack line. And when she's out there, I was filming her and you're just hoping for, you know, you're just hoping for success. You want her to achieve that personal goal. Um, if she didn't care about it, I wouldn't care as much, but because it was something that you knew she wanted to do, uh, it just makes you really root for her. So this picture was actually taken the morning after she did the record walk. And when she did the record walk, the light was a lot more beautiful. And so we've kind of got this really boring overcast sky. So we're gonna hop right in here. We're gonna punch up some of the details here on the rocks, really make this image shine and uh, do justice to what the moment represents. And moments later, uh, there it is. <laughs> I'm still like, I'm still in awe of how fast you can make some pretty drastic improvements to photos. Like, come on, look at the before of this and look at the after. Look at all the detail that we're getting back in Castleton there and around those rocks. Like I love just pulling out and on these foreground rocks here, just, man, it really helps Mia pop out on the line there. It's just a flat, boring dynamic to it earlier in those colors and now we're actually getting some interest. So you can see some of the haze get removed from the background there and that's with the landscape enhancer. This, this uh, is a little bit more of a dramatic edge to the edit, but if we just pulled back our overall adjustments by a little bit, we'd end up more to just kind of this natural look. And if we didn't like this sky, let's say uh, maybe a sunset wasn't working for us, we could easily swap this out with something a little less extreme. Okay, and there, that's another option of a different sky, um, just to kind of give you a variation of the look. 
And this photo was actually printed in a children's book of inspiring uh, achievements that uh, female athletes have done. And I wish uh, I paid a retoucher to kind of spice up the image before we sent it off to the publisher. But I wish that uh, I wish I had Luminar 4 back when I did that. That was over two years ago because we could have uh, breathed some life into this image on our own and not uh, and maybe save some of that money. <laughs> I want to invite you to share five images on a theme, and I'm going to share with you how to do that towards the end of this video. But at first, I've just got to give some love to the Skylum team behind Luminar 4 because. Honestly, I'd become a little stilted with editing photos and looking at all the wizardry that other people were doing and I'd try to emulate it sometimes and it would take me half hour, 45 minutes and my results would look like hacked together HDR wannabe stuff and I'd kind of just become stagnant in my photo process and it made it feel like sometimes sharing photos or even bothering to finish ones for my own library just for keepsakes just wasn't worth it. and. The process of editing photos in, in Luminar 4, honestly, for me, got me excited about post-processing stills again. Like this is, I'm like pumped to go through now even more. Like I want to put together more image sets and revitalize and breathe life into some of these stills that I know uh, I know could really get a new fresh coat of paint in Luminar. So I just want to say thank you to the Skylum team uh, for making uh, the ideas that are in my head faster and easier to bring to life, uh, which is pretty exciting. Make sure you give it a try because they've got a 30 day money back guarantee and I think you're going to be really impressed. So I want to see some uh, photos from you at home. So I'm inviting you to share a set of photos on a specific theme using the hashtag five stills five stories and the conditions here are just share five images they should probably be your own make sure that you describe the theme of what your set of images means to you tag me just make sure that i can find it and actually use the hashtag but also tag a friend that you want to see a set of five images from and i'm going to do my best to go through and feature some of these on my instagram page just spread a little uh, love around to the community but uh, i mostly just want to see what you guys have been up to in the past and this is one of those times where being a little nostalgic probably isn't a bad thing as we want to remember uh, what it is we're uh, fighting for with our staying at home and stuff like that. So I really appreciate you joining in on this video. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon. Remember, life's better when you make stuff. Peace.